Good afternoon, boys and girls, and welcome to episode 133 of Love at First Scent. With me, Persilay, is coming to you today live from YouTube, and the subject of this single perfume episode today is a brand new X-Tray from uh, Byredo, part of their X, part of their X-Tray range, about which I confess I don't know a huge amount. Uh, this will be the first of the X-Trays that I'll be trying. It's called Tobacco Mandarin, which is an interesting name because again the perfume greek in the perfume greek in me the perfume geek in me immediately thinks okay so what's the link going to be between those i'm just going to go on the old tablet to make sure that things are coming through loud and clear which they seem to be first comment to for this video goes to angela saying hi again everyone and yura says hello again uh q george says not the biggest fan of what the brand offers but always have an open mind i really like um some of their work, uh, the M Ink, sorry about the noisy unwrapping, the M Ink fragrance I think is uh, really, really exceptional and, and I like some of their other things. Um, but yeah, I'd be curious to know what the connection is, you know, is, is it just going to be one rather than the other? Um, oh, that's interesting, what does that say? Oh, Night Veils, yes, because Night Veils I think is what they call their extra collection. So as I'm unwrapping this, I should say, please consider subscribing to my channel if you haven't already done so. Leave questions, uh, leave comments. Um, I usually get round to, to all of them in due course. Never tried any from this brand, says Angela. Okay, interesting. They are worth checking out. They are worth checking out. Um, they, they they have a bit of a cult following, I suppose, and, and that's down to quite effective marketing. I think they've managed to sell themselves very much as a brand whose boxes you can't actually open very easily. Oh, yes, here we go. He's done it. Uh, Druba says they have interesting scents, but I feel that they produce scents that are quite different yet pleasing, but Eta Libre does a better job of making very interesting mind-bending scents. Yeah, I think I'm with you on this on that one. Um, <clears throat> Angela says, hope it's not like night vision. And Eric says, I'm curious about these. I'm not very into Byredo, but for some reason these X-rays sound... Lutins like to me, yes, and judging from the names of the other ones, I would agree with you. Only tried Gypsy Water as it's the most hyped, but was not impressed, says Yura. And I think I wasn't crazy about Gypsy Water either. John MD, never tried Byredo, but I love a well-executed Mandarin fragrance. Tried a few, not my type, says Ashfark. Uh, Alexandra says, I didn't really like this one, made me feel a bit sick. Ooh, okay, <laughs> that bodes well. Uh, Angeline says, I love a few of their scents. What is it with this packaging? Jeez, I can't get anything. Oh, okay, we've done it. Uh, Stiwa says, my favourites are 1996. Yes, that's a very, very good one as well. M, Mink and Bullion. Uh, hello from Virginia, says Eli or Ellie. Druba says, I genuinely hope you've tried their pulp. Um, not for a long time. I love Bal d'Afrique. Yes, that has a lot of fans. Not my favourite house, but always interested in getting your opinion, says Keith. Get the sick bag ready just in case, personally, says you're okay. So, God, I hope not. This is, uh, this is Tobacco Mandarin. Promising looking colour, isn't it? Although I wonder if it's... It's, it's going to have artificial colouring, isn't it? I wonder where they... Yes, it has got... It has, it's got a violet, it's got a red, it's got a yellow. Uh, I guess lo lots of brands do that, but I, I always sort of think artificial colouring is a little bit... Excited by this, says Benjamin, although only like a handful of Byredo, heard reports that this has some resemblance to tribute from Amouage. Seriously, wow. That would be a compliment. And well, Okay, we need to try this. So, because as Benjamin says, it's a buy, if so. Let's find out. Okay, tobacco, mandarin, extrait de parfum, and this is a 50ml bottle of extrait. Feels so wrong spraying all these extras on. Um... <laughs> oh, look who's popped up. Tribute, says Reno. Well, I, well <laughs> I'm not even going to comment on. If you have any Amouage queries, please send them. Please send them to the Belgian in Oman, please. <laughs> Thanks for tuning in. Reno is offended, says Yura. <laughs> you never know who's watching, right? Okay, Tobacco Mandarin from Virido. Oh, come on, spray mechanism. Oh, gosh, evil colour. Can you see that? Yeah. Hold it up against myself. 
can't catch a break, uh, says Benjamin. Okay, now, the first smell that is, the first sniff that is coming to me now is not tribute. Um, but it's interesting. And and who was it that said Lutans like? It is it is almost like they're trying to do a Lutans. Um Renault knows I love his stuff, says Benjamin. Good, I hope so. <laughs> uh, do, can you imagine what would happen if like lots of people from different brands suddenly started watching an episode and commenting and Renault you can relax now, says you're and Eric says I love artificial perfume colouring. Sorry guys, no well, that's that's fine. They've done it for you, Eric. Okay, so what have we got here? Quite, quite dry, resinous. Then the thing that pops out straight away is um, tobacco rather than mandarin. And somebody's giving me a tennis update. Thank you very much. But hopefully there, hopefully there aren't people reading this comment who actually wanted to watch the tennis match later. But we'll put that to one side. Well done, Nadal. <laughs> um, I'm not immediately getting... A mandarin feel or even a particularly citrusy feel but <laughs> there's a comment to the previous video here so i'm just going to i'm just going to write it i'm going to go over it because people watching this as a recording will not know what the hell we're talking about but maybe what there is is something that is making the tobacco lighter and fresher and juicier so you don't get an overt mandarin note but you do get a tobacco that seems to be filtered through something um, unexpected. And the tobacco is quite bitter, which is interesting. Um, bitter, but may maybe sweet as well. No, th this is interesting stuff, actually. Interesting uh, composition, because there's a kind of freshness to it. Maybe a hay-like quality. I think Tobacco Absolute does have a hay-like quality to it as well, doesn't it? Um, and, you know, a kind of resinous, balsamic base. So, you you know, you're kind of thinking probably the usual suspects, you know, your labdanums and your benzoins and some other balsams. But there's something, there's something, there's something kind of hinting at being a bit Arabian and maybe just being a bit hesitant to go all the way. I'm waiting for Ben Gorham to join the... But can you imagine if Ben Gorham suddenly says, well, actually, Tribute was my inspiration. It was the reference that I was trying to go for. <laughs> ah, never mind. Light, juicy, sweet tobaccos. Fantastic, says Thea. Yeah, I suppose so. OK, let, let's let this do its thing. Even the colouring is very Lutans. Bitter tobacco... As in tobacco snuff, says Ashfaq, maybe. I'm not over-familiar with tobacco snuff. There is a bit of a press release. So, let's see what that says. Where did I pop that? Which, which, which of these many apps on this tablet do I need to go to? Okay, here we go. Uh, not terribly long, so you needn't worry too much. It sta starts with a quote from uh, Ben Gorham. I think there is something about night time. So, yeah, it's dark. It's a different world of possibilities, a different version of who you are, a nocturnal sense of duality. OK, we'll let him have that. But we'll, let's, let's not be too cheeky, Persiles. From nocturnal blooms to animals, there is an entire part of nature that lives at night. True. How can we be removed from that? I know I have a completely different mindset at nightfall. My mindset at nightfall is usually, I'm so tired, I need to get to bed. It's very distinctive emotionally. It is almost the start of another life. And I wanted to do something to mark the beginning of the evening, a new nighttime ritual that would sound a gong for when this twilight life begins. I'll have what he's having. Tobacco Mandarin completes a quartet of night veils, joining Casablanca Lily, Reine de Nuit, and Cellier as part of Byredo's singular series of extras, mirroring the opening ceremony of applying scent. Sorry, opening ceremony. I'm thinking of the Olympics now. Mirroring the morning ceremony of applying scent. Night veils are designed for the ritual of the night, their application signalling the start of the evening and the embracing of an alternate nighttime life. Well, let Ben have this, but I think that wearing perfume at night 
is just as much of a ritual as it is spraying it on first thing in the day, but, but let's go with it. Like flowers that release their headiest scent at twilight with a more voluptuous, rich and rounded interplay of notes, these penetrating concentrations, concentrates of perfume made from the purest and most precious of ingredients envelop the wearer in an intense yet intimate fragrance. Let's actually get on to, the, to this one. So, Tobacco Mandarin. A journey to another place and time where bright citrus and spice are contrasted against dark, smoke-filled sophistication and intrigue. In Tangier... European West meets African Near East, an ancient city of contrasts where a daytime landscapes of cit cit citrus trees and the spice trade is juxtaposed against a seductive nighttime world of femme and homme fatale wreathed in tobacco smoke enthroned in leather. Tangier is beautiful, by the way. If you've never been, do try to go back one day when we can travel again. Here, a place of self-mythologizing complexity inspires a scent immersed in the sensual, chic and dangerous. In a, in a safe way. In this evocation of contrasts and intrigue, raw noble ingredients stay, stay true. A sparkling swathe of citrus and spice instantly transports through top notes of mandarin, coriander and cumin. So that'll mean trying it on skin for sure. At heart, any flightiness is forgotten. <clears throat> Where traditional and elegant creamy leather and labdanum fix the fragrance, while a smoky cloak of narcotic tobacco envelops all. <clears throat> At base, further anchoring and compelling are ancient resins and woods, both sacred and profane. A libanum or frankincense with its connotations of holy aromatic sweetness. Here we go. Oud and sandalwood with their nuanced and captivating soothing woodiness. But it's not overdone. It, it, and it's not, it's not, you know, crass in any way. This is definitely one to try on skin, actually. I'm being a bit too cheeky about it because I think the press release is winding me up, but, but this is worth trying on skin. Presenting an almost stratified history of the ancient city of Tangier, interesting, a crossroads of the world through scent, tobacco mandarin evokes an opulent and age-old interplay of past and present, day and night, masculine and feminine, undimmed through time. The fragrance itself uh, could be a complex character in a novel or film noir, if you like. And they've just got some notes. So as they said in the press release, mandarin, coriander, cumin, tobacco, leather, labdanum, libanum, oud, and sandalwood. And all, I think, made hipster friendly, I think, which is, which is not a bad thing because hipsters should smell nice too, right? It's all just toned down a little bit so that it doesn't necessarily go all the way like a Lutin's. But I do have to say, the tobacco note is coming through very nicely, and it it's very attractive. Uh, I'm, I'm guessing I missed a few comments, so we'll read them quickly, and then we'll finish and do the final video for today. Uh, sounds like an Arabian light scent from a well-known worldwide brand, says the Druba. Not bad, but needs to appeal to many. Still holding on to my last two mils from the vintage red box, says Floating Man. I lost the... Oh, of tribute. Yeah. Thea says, something of the night. Hmm. <laughs> uh, I wear sandalwood oil as my bedtime ritual, says Floating Man. Uh, Arme sombre is Sultan Pasha's ode to... Or Arme sombre, so as in soul. Angela says, sent for bed again. How unusual. Gavin says, the purest ingredients are single molecule synthetics. Sing very true. Um... Hello from, from Haiti, says Geralda. So happy I can watch a live episode. Wow. Send us some of your veti there. Um, I'm late. Is it good? Don't like Byredo, says Brady. It's pretty good. The perfumer, says Renault. I haven't been able to find out. And um, the, unless you know, and uh, the interwebs have not been able to tell me who the perfumer is. Frag Chaitan says, oh, they're talking to somebody else. <clears throat> Hi, Mr. P. What do you think of the new Deceit? I haven't tried it. And Renault says, is it Jérôme Epinette? I don't know. I don't know. I know that obviously he's done a, a, a lot of theirs, but I, I could try to find out. Um, he's asking tough questions, isn't he? Um, hipster, hope Lalabo will catch on to it, says Ashfaq. And, whoa, that was a long, pretentious soliloquy. Those press releases are getting better and better, says Yura. Mm. Okay. Blotter update coming uh, a few hours after this broadcast. But for now, I will say uh, goodbye. If you are still tuning in and watching live, uh, we'll be back in a few minutes with um, an extra, another extra. Oh, the perfumer is Zlatan Ibrahimovic. 
<laughs> okay, we'll come back with an extra, which is actually a flanker from a very big brand. A flanker of a huge, huge, huge success from a big brand. So hopefully see you in a few minutes. Bye.